The construction industry is the world's largest consumer of raw materials. A World Economic Forum report found that less than a third of construction and demolition waste is recovered and reused. The industry also accounts for 25-40% to 40 of global carbon emissions. There are a lot of people working in solutions across the world. Today we'd like to introduce you to one of the research projects that looks promising. Innovation Design Engineering is a double master's program jointly delivered by Royal College of Art and Imperial College London. A team of four students have developed a new composite material called Finite. The great thing about Finite is that it makes use of material that has very little use currently, desert sand or quarry finds. Finite is as strong as residential concrete, but it can be melted down and remolded for multiple life cycles. It's more environment friendly and has half the carbon footprint of concrete. We met the team to find out more about the project, the aims and the challenges they faced along the way. Thank you very much for joining me. It's exciting to have you here, get a chance to learn more about your project. Um, before we head deep into it, I'd like you to introduce yourself briefly to tell us a little more about, about you, your education, your interests. Maybe Matteo, would you like to start? Yeah, so my name is Mateo, and we actually met uh, through this course, Innovation Design Engineering, at the RCA and Imperial College. And my background was mechanical engineering, mm -hmm. um, doing a couple years of manufacturing back in Canada uh, in the industry, but then wanting to come here to be more involved in sustainability and innovation. Uh, hence why I'm doing this master's. Wonderful. And I'm Saki, I'm from Japan and I did international law, so it's kind of a bit different background and yeah, like here, my interest here is like uh, to change people's perception, stereotypical perception through great play. Wonderful. So my name is Hamza, I did uh, mechanical engineering uh, here in the UK. Uh, but I've always had a focus on kind of a human-centered approach to engineering and then kind of came to the RCA straight after graduation uh, but worked a little bit in defense and also for Brompton uh, just kind of doing bits and pieces here and there and designing products. Uh, I'm Carolyn and I study architecture at Bartlett UCL before and I'm really interested in material exploration and I think the reason why I choose this course is because I feel like, like in my previous profession, it's very hard for me to test material or actually play with the material. So during the course in, 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 in this, this course, I just take every chance I can to like try to uh, do lots of material experiment, especially in the Imperial. And actually, this is my fourth project on material. Wow, already. wonderful. So the two engineers with very like straight straight thinking, and then our two creatives, yeah. uh, which uh, really pushed the <laughs> pushed us to try and think a little more creatively and yeah. give more attention to design and stuff. That's excellent. Okay, so let's head directly into the problem. Tell me more about how did you discover this problem? What kind of research went into it? We well, I think we kind of came across the problem in an indirect way because we were actually looking at abundant resources around the world, and the first few that we were looking were like water, plastics, bioplastics actually, and then we were looking at sand, ignorantly thinking it was abundant, but then as we kind of went deeper and deeper into it, we realized actually some sand is more valuable than others, so beach sand is much more used, beach and quarry sand is much more used for concrete, so that makes up about a third of the world's concrete, um, but desert sand actually is used for nothing, because it's just too fine and smooth to be bound to anything. Um, so we kind of found out maybe through indirectly, but as we got deeper and deeper into it, that began to kind of highlight some of the issues. So like the Singapore issue, Sing Singapore being accused. What else, like India? India, yeah. 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 Did that come as a surprise? That was yeah. A huge yeah, it's yeah. really shocking. It was a huge surprise for anyone we told that two yeah. years and so on. Tell us more about your solution. I'm very excited to hear you talk about that. So the, the, full, the full hierarchy of how it went, and it all kind of came full circle, mm -hmm. is initially we always knew we wanted to experiment with materials. Mm -hmm. And so we were looking for instant somethings. We liked that when people put traditional materials into new forms that made them basically perform magic or made them become very functional for a user. Mm -hmm. Then we pivoted a bit more to looking at abundant materials to make making accessible to people again, so bringing mm -hmm. back making. Mm -hmm. And then finally, it kind of 
once we found this whole narrative of sand not being abundant and so on, it became more about how can you transform all these fine powders, because it's not just as a sand, there's quarry waste and so on, mm. how can you transform these into usable materials mm. that uh, don't have all the negative impacts of, let's say, concrete or these permanent materials that trap these things away forever. Mm. So. Interesting. So. Uh, you told me before that sand wars was one of the uh, one of the sources of Im information that you found. It's very interesting that a movie can inspire yeah. and you know kind of you know spread so much faster. Yeah. Uh, fascinating. Tell me more about the solution. How did you make sure that this was uh, uh, actually, sourced from? So we actually have to look it at the microscope. We can confirm that the. The microscopic picture of the desert sand, it looks much rounder than mm. other sand, so we can confirm. It's Interesting. Definitely. So then you thought about binding, finding a way to bind desert sand together. Yeah. Excellent. And I think what really excites us is that because we, we know that at the end this is, can be as strong as uh, some like residential concrete, but we all know that um, concrete is not a really good material in a way that you know it made of it has combined by cement and you cannot degrade it but with our material you can always like degrade it back to the natural environment so mm. we found like found these material properties like super interesting wonderful yeah so you have the two bands you have the engineering side this is useful mm. but then you also have like the kind of um, sustainability side which is like okay well what are the life cycle of this material how will that change mm. Talk me more about the testing that you did. Uh, I was very excited to hear that you tested it and you found that <laughs> it has uh, compressive strength yeah, yeah. equivalent or comparable to actual concrete. So talk to, me, talk to us more about that. So um, we did a round of testing. We were able to leverage mm. stuff from Imperial mm -hmm. uh, because we were a joint course with them. We were able to use their facilities. Mm -hmm. And so this was probably the latest brick that we were able to show could hold up two SUVs. Mm -hmm. yeah. SUVs? Two yeah. SUVs, yeah. Wow. So that equates to like 17 megapascals, which is what residential concrete is, uh, is often in that range. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So even stronger than your uh, housing bricks as well. Mm. Um, so that kind of gave us the validation needs we can do with this. And then we also did like other tests. Um, thermal tests, uh, flash tests, flexure tests, so try to get as many of that typical data sheet stuff you could get. Yeah. Okay, so um, what kind of um, challenges did you face along the way? Yeah, um, well with like a new material or a new composite, it's really hard to like know what you're going to get out of it. Mm. So for like every successful thing we did, we had a couple like failures as well. Like. Um, we, we initially tried out as well 3D printing it, um, but just the way the material behaves, how it cools over time, mm. meant that there was a lot of cleaning up to do after some experience. <laughs> and, you know, yeah. just, uh, yeah, I think getting messy and getting your hands on the material and trying a lot of things, seeing what works and what doesn't work is a big part of it. Um, but yeah, that's the only way, just by seeing exactly like what problems it does have at certain temperatures or with certain types of applications. Luckily we've had quite a bit of interest. We definitely see there being different elements to this. One is to like scale up because right now it's been very kept internal within our program. But um, really since we are looking at structural elements for this, getting this into let's say exhibitions would be very interesting to us, potentially at a larger scale that captures the imagination more so than small bricks. Mm. Um, apart from that, there's been some research interest in terms of just getting into the nitty gritty of doing like a research paper on the material. Mm. Um, but we're still discussing internally and seeing where we can take this. Right. Lots of options. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's exciting. Options are a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> there are actually lots of students from the design product who try to contact with us and see if we can do a collaboration. Really? Yeah, oh, that's exciting. Yeah. Wonderful. Great, wonderful. Thank you so much. This is very exciting. I wish you all the very best and thanks so much for your time. Oh, thank you. Right? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.